stories of what they think you're like and I've heard a tender whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're with me and I am never alone you're a good good father to it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you, who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, you're a good, good father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you, it's who I am.
For those of us who are gentlemen, the women have a song, and it's just our cry to be like God. And I just want us to take that one or two times before I introduce our speaker for today, if that's all right. I want to be more like you. That's our song. Amen. disciples you transformed lives for good when you visited the home of the short man Zacchaeus and he ate with you his life was totally transformed for good and the cry of our heart this morning oh God because you have spread the stable before us and you have fed us is that by reason of feeding at your feet <laughs> or feeding with you at your table and sitting at your feet every life every home every marriage, every family, our cities and our towns will be transformed by you for the glory and honor of your name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Good morning. Please be seated. It's a pleasure to see all of you. Only that I was hoping that when I climbed up here, I would see smiles on everyone's faces. I can only see on one, two people. Um, can I have 
you some Sweetheart, is this? Thank you. So I can only see smiles on a few faces. So I'm going to close my eyes. And when I open them, let me see how many people I'll see smiling. Eyes closed. Four, five. Eyes open. Much better. Excellent. Thank you very much. Amen. Uh, my mom used to say food is a recipe for everything. No matter what's wrong with you, she'll first of all ask you to go and eat. If after eating you're still not feeling good, then there is a problem. Then we can tackle it. Amen. So good morning, everybody, and welcome, and thank you for coming. I want... Good morning, sir. <laughs> I want to thank especially our guest speaker. I think she has made the longest journey just for breakfast. What do you think? <laughs> so it's good she didn't come all this way to an empty crowd. So the Lord bless you all for coming. Um, this weekend, so over this weekend, Saturday morning, Saturday evening, Sunday, we have our guest speakers, Brian and Camden. Now, Uncle Paul asked me a question and I couldn't answer. All the way from Pennsylvania, Sir Paul. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All the way from Pennsylvania, they have come down to speak with us. Um, somebody said to me, how do you know Brian and Camden? I said, well, I don't really know you, do I? We've just met, we have chatted and all. But as the time I invited them, the Lord just said, go to Global Awakening and invite them to come. And they belong to a big body of believers called Global Awakening. When Tuebi was three years old, I encountered the gentleman in charge of Global Awakening here in the United Kingdom, um, Alan and Donna, and invited them over and they came. I had gone for a Randy Clark conference. Randy Clark is the general, should I use the word, general overseer of Global Awakening. And I had met with him. And one of the things he had said at that conference was, if you can't get directly to me, there are other people I work with. They carry the same grace and the same spirit, so you can always reach out to them. And that is more or less what I did. And I just said, Lord, who would you have me invite? Because there are many. And the Lord took me to Brian. So I sent out a call and I said, Brian, could you please come and minister to us? And I got a response from Camden. <laughs> and she says, we are a couple and we do the work together. And sure, it will be a pleasure to come and minister to you. And she didn't just say it would be a pleasure. She showed up. They had never heard of anti chairs. Never heard of Kingsway Community Church, but the body of Christ is the body of Christ. Amen. And one thing I know they are hungry for is to do whatever God is doing. To walk with the presence of God and introduce the presence of God to a place. So I won't speak much because I'm not here to speak. I just want you to give a warm Harwich Dovercourt and Christian welcome to our dear sister Camden. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Such an honor to be here with you all this morning. I, my husband and I just traveled yesterday from the U.S., so still feeling a bit of jet lag, but God is kind to us <laughs> and helping with the adjustment. But it is such an honor to be here with you all this morning. And uh, thank you guys for worship. That was great. Yeah. Um, this is my first time in the U.K. I've never been to the U.K. before. This is fun. I had my first scone, real scone this morning. It was great. <laughs> and I'm just excited to share with you all. You know, um, I'm with Global Awakening. How many of you guys have heard of that ministry before? A couple of you. Okay. What about Randy Clark? Is anyone here familiar with Randy? Okay, a few of you all. Um, so just to give a bit of context, Randy Clark really started traveling and ministering after a revival that happened in 1994 called the Toronto Blessing. Uh, with Toronto Catch the Fire. Are you guys familiar with Catch the Fire or maybe the revival that was in Toronto? Uh, that was, yeah, in the 90s. People traveled from all over the world to that revival to experience the presence of the Holy Spirit uh, and to be filled and activated in the gifts of the Spirit. So that's really what Global Awakening does and what Randy Clark does is we, as a ministry, travel all around the world equipping people and how to partner with the Holy Spirit to receive more from God 
and to practically partner with hearing from God, uh, seeing people be healed, uh, seeing we, we operate in um, with the prophetic gift, uh, and just following the Lord and, and living a sold out life for him. So that's very much my passion, uh, my husband's passion. Uh, my husband will be speaking tonight. He's going to do a healing service. So I'm going to share some healing testimonies with you all this morning and share some of my story uh, just to give you guys some context for who we are. But that really is um, what we're passionate about. And we see fruit of it all over the world because God is good. Amen. He's so faithful and he continues to show up again and again, wherever we go, wherever he sends us, he shows up and it's beautiful. And so we've been praying for, for you all for this weekend that the Lord would show up and, and that his presence would come and just bless uh, you all in this church. And we don't take it lightly when we see um, what it takes to sow into the kingdom and, and even your church and graciously hosting us. We know the Lord sees that and we're just praying that the Lord honors that and we know that he will because he's so good. In increasing what you all see here, that's our prayer, that there would be more healings, that people would encounter the Holy Spirit this weekend and know what God really made them for. You know, our ultimate calling in God is to live fully alive in Jesus, that, that we have access now through the Holy Spirit to partner with the kingdom of God, right? For me, when I grew up, I didn't know about the partnering with the Holy Spirit. I didn't hear any language around that. I grew up in a church that was very traditional, and uh, I didn't hear anything about healings or about the prophetic or, or about partnering with the power of God. But I'll let you know that I, I really needed to experience the power of God. I, I, I needed a God that was near to me and a God that, that sees me where I had a real relationship with him. And I didn't grow up with that experience because when I was younger, I, I lost my dad suddenly when I was eight years old, just a totally unexpected thing. And I grew up in a very loving home. My parents were very loving. But in going through that tragedy, uh, I was suddenly wrestling with what's my purpose in life and the reality of eternity and and really um, searching and asking some big questions. And I struggled with um, depress depression and just dealing with grief and loss. And uh, when I was about 12 years old, I also started dealing with chronic pain. So I had, uh, on a scale of one to 10, I had about a level eight migraine constantly that never left. And I just had to learn how to live with the pain. And I didn't know that healing was an option for me. Uh, my parents spent thousands of dollars in medical bills to try to find out what could be the cause of the migraine, uh, which it can be very hard to know what causes a migraine. There can be all sorts of different reasons for it. So we weren't really getting any answers. And that was several years journey of trying to get answers, not finding out anything. And then when I was around 16 years old, my mom posted on Facebook that I was dealing with this migraine and that I was going to have to be hospitalized for two weeks or get Botox shots in my head to, to numb the pain, which apparently is pretty common to have to get Botox shots in your head if you're dealing with that type of pain like I was. So when she posted this on Facebook, uh, someone reached out to her. They'd recently become Facebook friends. She knew him in middle school. He had gotten radically saved and became an evangelist that would pray for people for healing. And uh, he reached out to my mom over Facebook. And I wasn't expecting anything because I'd never heard of healing. I'd already tried so many different things. I really didn't think that God was going to heal me. But when he prayed for me over the phone, I felt my pain leave for the first time in years, um, which was amazing. I didn't end up getting completely healed in that moment, uh, but it definitely got my attention. And I realized, okay, this is possible in God. Like, I believe that God can heal me. It wasn't until a year later that I ended up getting completely healed. And in that year time, 
I also uh, had been dealing with food allergies when I was young, but they got really bad in between uh, the first prayer and then when I ended up going to a healing conference where I could barely eat anything. I had to make uh, gluten-free, dairy-free bread and had to bring all my own food wherever I went. It was very hard for me to travel. Uh, it, it was hard for me to, even at school, uh, I had to bring all my own meals to school, and uh, it just was very limiting. Sometimes we don't really realize uh, how limiting even a migraine can be for people. Um, and I understand that because I've dealt with chronic pain, what that's like. And um, <clears throat> I remember when I was dealing with the migraine, I, it was my migraine was ocular, so I'd have pain behind my eyes. So I wasn't able to look at bright lights. I, I'd often wear sunglasses inside. And for the food allergies, when I would eat something bad, it wasn't that it was fatal to me, but I would have to go into a dark room with no sound for a few days and just rest until the pain got a little better because I still wasn't pain-free, but it, it would be really bad if I ate something that, was, uh, that I was allergic to. So I was in this place of feeling desperate just desperate for God, desperate for answers, desperate for a solution. And I got invited to go to a healing weekend. And when I went, I, like I said, it was hard for me to travel with my food allergies. So I went up thinking, okay, either God's going to heal me or I am just not going to eat this weekend. <laughs> and when I arrived on the first night, there was someone on the ministry team uh, that called out my condition. I don't know if you're familiar with um, words of knowledge. It's something that my ministry will train on, but it's basically when God speaks to you something uh, that you did not know. It's like a piece of uh, information from the Lord that the Lord speaks, where essentially, especially in healing ministry, if God is saying, um, okay, like maybe I'm getting an impression of a kidney uh, like maybe God's speaking to me, I want to heal someone's kidney, that would be an example of a word of knowledge where someone on the team was praying and they felt like, okay, I believe God wants to heal migraines and food allergies. And so they shared that from the stage and I knew it was for me. And I went up front and this girl prayed for me and I had 90% of my pain leave that night and then the next morning I woke up completely pain-free. Uh, yeah, amen, amen. <laughs> it was amazing. And something that we don't always realize is when you're experiencing healing, you're experiencing the nature of God. And, and the power of God is so needed because when we experience a gift of the Spirit, we're also seeing the heart of the Father, and we're experiencing who he is. And for me, it really reconciled my heart to the heart of God, where the questions I was wrestling with, suddenly I realized I do have a God that sees me. I do have a God that's with me. Because when you go through tragedy like I did, you really need to uh, know God's love and his nearness and his kindness. And for me, when I got healed, that was what I experienced. And I realized that I wanted to spend the rest of my life introducing people to God and to his nearness and to the reality of the kingdom of God and partnering with the Holy Spirit. Because I grew up a Christian, but I didn't know that this is what it meant to be a Christian. I didn't know that I could have such a vibrant, personal, intimate relationship with God. That is our greatest joy. Amen to get to have that closeness to Jesus. It's what we all long for and our hearts were made for. And that's why it's important for us to have uh, an understanding about, about healing, about how to pr practically partner with the gifts of the Spirit. Because for me, um, like I said, I didn't hear about it growing up, but even when I did know that it was true, I didn't realize that I could cultivate this gift with God and learn how to hear his voice and learn how to see people healed uh, through prayer. I didn't know that that was something that was available to me. And so I started this journey of growing and following the Holy Spirit. And I remember the day uh, after I got healed, I saw 
uh, my first healing, and I learned how to hear from God and, and how to uh, receive impressions from the Holy Spirit. And so I remember um, God told me he wanted to heal uh, someone's ankle, and there was a woman that had had a fractured ankle, and and that was the first healing that I saw where God used me to pray for her, and, and, and her pain left. She was able to walk pain-free, and it was amazing. Um, and the Lord wants to use all of us that way because we're all called, right? You see in um, Acts 2, when Peter is preaching, and he says, you know, pretty much God removes uh, any type of barrier that we may place on ourselves, right? Men and women can be used. Uh, anyone from any class can be used. Different races can be used. God just levels the playing ground and says everyone now gets to be used by the Holy Spirit. Because ultimately, if we see uh, in Second Chronicles, there's a verse that says, the eyes of the Lord roam throughout the earth, searching for someone he can show himself strong through. And the only qualifier is that there's a that he's looking for a heart that's fully yielded to him. He's looking for a heart that's willing to say yes to him. Isn't it great that you don't have to be a famous pastor to be used by God? God uses famous pastors, and that's a, a blessing. But the Holy Spirit wants to use any of us that have a yielded heart that's just willing to say, yes, God, I'll be used for your kingdom. And God started using me even when I was a teenager just because I said, yes, God, I want to be used for your kingdom, right? And what's so beautiful about following the Holy Spirit is as soon as you experience him or you know about this is available to you, he can immediately usher you into walking into it. <laughs> He'll immediately send you out, just like he did with the disciples, right? With Peter, he had this miraculous catch of fish. And Peter said, get away from me, Lord, I'm a sinner, which we a lot of times can feel unworthy, especially when we have an encounter with Jesus and he's so wonderful and we know ourselves and know that we're not perfect. <laughs> and yet Jesus said, Peter, now you'll be fishing for men. Where he immediately started using him and empowered him and bestowed worth upon him and brought him along in this journey because he's so good. He wants to, God decided he wants to partner with us, which is funny, like, you know, because we're people. <laughs> we're not going to do things perfectly, but God's okay with that. He just wants us to be yielded to him. He just wants us to partner with him. So I believe that the Lord wants to um, just encourage you and encourage your faith in healing ministry and in what is available to you. And I just want to share a few testimonies with you. Um, but I will say, uh, you guys may be familiar with this verse, but in Exodus uh, 15, 26, you guys can turn there if you want. I'm just going to read one verse. Um, and I do love preaching a lot of different scriptures. I just this morning wanted to share some stories with you. <laughs> I actually have a preaching where, a, a message where I just go all through all of Hebrews 4 and read like the whole thing. <laughs> but, um, but this morning I just wanted to share some encouraging stories with you all. But in, in Exodus 15, 26, this is where God establishes himself as our healer, where we hear the term Jehovah Rapha. Are you all familiar with that name for God? Yeah. So Exodus 15, 26 says, If you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. So what's so interesting about that verse is the Israelites did not have a relationship with Jehovah prior to God delivering them in Exodus. They didn't know God. And so God is saying, this is my nature. This is who I am. Because as you can imagine, I'm sure that they had a lot of intimidation <laughs> after seeing what God did to the Egyptians, right? I mean, this is an all-powerful God. And you know, when God 
was was um, displaying and coming against the Egyptians with the plagues, each of the plagues were coming against a specific Egyptian god, where it was challenging a specific Egyptian god and what those gods represented. So essentially what was happening is, is God was acting out the first commandment. There shall be no other gods before me. He's dismantling every other a God that the Egyptians worshipped and showing the Israelites, I am the Lord your God. I am that I am. And how he introduced himself to Moses. And so here in Exodus, he's establishing part of his nature. I am the God that heals you. That's who I am. And as you follow me, you're going to experience my nature. That's why I love when God is speaking to Moses and Moses is praying for the glory of God to come. Uh, he says that I will go before you and that goodness and mercy will go before you, right? Like God is saying, like, he's a God of goodness and of mercy. And so you see that uh, the Israelites are experiencing the nature of God in uh, this uh, season where God's establishing himself. And that really is what God has come to do is heal us. And if you're familiar with uh, Bethel teaching, I know Jennifer said that she's been to Bethel. Uh, have you guys heard them teach on Sozo? You guys familiar with Sozo? So Sozo is a Greek word, and it means salvation. Uh, we first see mention of it in, in Matthew 121, uh, when the angel's talking to Mary, and the angel says uh, that she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for it is he who will save his people from their sins. So that's the first use of sozo. And, and why I bring up sozo is because sozo in the Greek, it, it means more than just salvation. There's a couple different interpretations for it. But it also includes uh, physical deliverance from danger, uh, physical healing from sickness, and deliverance from demonic oppression. So essentially, what, what God intends for us is that we would be whole internally and physically, that wholeness, that when God is saving us, he's bringing us into wholeness. As I said, that God's ultimately de desiring for you to live fully alive in him, fully free, fully whole. And that includes uh, bringing healing to your body, just like I experienced. So just wanted to share that uh, briefly, and, and then I want to share a couple testimonies with you all. But we really will be praying more for healing tonight. So I encourage you to come back tonight, and we'll be praying for healing more, and you can bring different people that need healing. Um, but just wanted to share a couple recent testimonies with you all. Um, a couple years ago, my husband and I were ministering in Pennsylvania, about an hour away from where we live, and we were at a house church. So there weren't a lot of people there. There were about 20 people there. And a mother came up to us, and she was very upset. And she needed healing for her son. And we didn't know necessarily what was going on. But she explained to us that he has autism. And he has had uh, pandas. So that is an autoimmune disorder that is associated with strep. So basically, he grew up with autism, but then he had pandas, and this made the autism even worse, where he was um, hitting himself, hitting his parents, just a very sad situation. And the mother was feeling hopeless but desperate, like I was. I was feeling desperate. She was feeling that desperation for her son uh, to have his life back. And she came to us asking for prayer. The son wasn't even there, uh, but we were praying, and and just praying peace over him and over the mom and over this situation. We didn't even like pray with the boy in person. Since he had autism, it was hard for him to stay still. And so we weren't necessarily gonna force him to sit there and make him feel upset. So we just prayed from a distance as he was in the other room for peace over him. And then we left and we didn't necessarily know what happened for a while, but uh, we came back a year later to be with a different house church. And we hadn't talked with the pastors before. We'd texted, but we hadn't met them in person. So we were going to a dinner at their house. And as we we're getting close to their house, my husband and I were talking and he said, I wonder whatever happened to that boy that we prayed for. We're like, I don't know. 
So we get to the house, and uh, the boy's mom opens the door. And we, uh, there was two couples that had planned this church. So we've been talking with the other couple. We didn't know that she had planted a church. So we go inside, and we're like, wow, like, you've planted a church. Like, what's going on? Uh, you know, what has God been doing in your lives? And uh, she, she called her son to come down, and her son came down. He's a completely normal little boy. I mean, it was amazing. He was seven when, he prayed, when we prayed for him. He was almost, he was about nine years old. We saw him again. We found out that within a year span, God had been healing his mind. And he was in a special needs program. He eventually was getting healed enough to where he was starting to teach the other special needs kids. And God was continuing to heal him over this year span until eventually he was moved out of the special needs program into a normal uh, classroom setting. And then he was so healed that the teachers actually said, he's in a gifted program, he should skip a grade. I mean, it was amazing. <laughs> And it's funny, he didn't want to skip a grade because he didn't want to leave his friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but the Lord just brought such healing to him where suddenly his life was restored. And, and when people experience healing, it was the same way in my family where it's not just the person that's sick that it's affecting. It, it is affecting the family, especially if you have a child. It's affecting the parents as they're taking care of their child. And so when there's healing that comes, it's, it's like it brings healing and salvation to a household, right? Because it's affecting the whole family. It's beautiful. And so the Lord just did a beautiful work and, and started um, using the boy. His name is Jackson and, and uh, speaking to him and using him to minister to people. And it's just incredible what God did. But it, so now at this point, um, we've seen, especially my husband has seen about 10 or 11 different a people healed of autism. Yeah, and, and we have more friends that are seeing that. It's really something that um, in our community, people have been praying for more consistently because uh, I just believe that the Lord just wants to remove the hopelessness that so many people feel about it. And God is so faithful and kind, and he's just been bringing healing to, to neurological issues and... Uh, it's amazing. Um, just, just last week, I was in Iowa. So I've had a busy month. I was telling him at my table, I'm only home nine days this month. Uh, so it's, it's been a busy month for me, but, but it's been uh, beautiful. And I was in Iowa, which is a state more in the center of the United States. Um, and I was there ministering with Global. We just had a Global Awakening Conference last week. And we were doing um, an impartation service so that's a time of just praying for people to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I was just going around praying for people, and I prayed over this one guy. Uh, I just said the word stillness. I didn't know that he needed healing. I didn't know, uh, you know, what was going on in his life. I hadn't met him. I just was going through and praying for different people. And I found out later he, he testified that he had had symptoms. Uh, well, he'd been diagnosed with ADHD. And that after I prayed for him and just said the word stillness, that his symptoms were gone that he was feeling better. And um, what's so cool about that, and the, and the same story with Jackson, is it was just a simple word. Like I just said stillness. And, and when we were praying for Jackson, it just said peace. It wasn't anything complicated. And I know for some of the other autism healings we've heard, it's been something very simple like that. Uh, another story with a neurological issue is um, maybe about a year and a half ago, there was a woman in another service where we were praying for people to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We weren't praying for healing specifically, didn't know she needed healing, hadn't met her. And uh, Brian, my husband, was coming down and praying, and he just prayed peace over her and then just was continuing to pray for other people. And he found out later that she had actually been diagnosed with bipolar and was on medication, and uh, the Lord healed her. She was actually uh, from the Ukraine, but was in the States. And this was after the war had started, so it was not too long ago. And she had really wanted to go over to serve the Ukrainians and just partner with mission work there, but hadn't been able to go because of her bipolar. And also that was just difficult for her in her life. But the Lord healed her, and then she was able to go to the Ukraine. 
which if you're dealing with something like that, like to be in, in a war where there's bombings and, and you know, sirens going off and all of that would be way too much for you. And yet the Lord brought healing to her, which was just so beautiful. And it wasn't even, like I said, uh, something long or elaborate, uh, but it was just partnering with the Holy Spirit and just praying peace over the person. We didn't even know she had this condition. And yet God brought healing, which was so amazing. So I'm going to share one more testimony. Uh, and then I don't know if we transition back into worship afterwards, because I know you're hanging out up here. So <laughs> I'm good with whatever. That sounds great. I love worshiping. By the way, you have an amazing voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Okay. So another story I felt like the Lord wanted me to share is um, about six years ago, my husband and I were ministering in Alabama. And there was a woman uh, that we ended up praying for named Tony. And we minister with Randy Clark. And so Randy will, will give us opportunity to pray for people with him. We're, we're um, his spiritual son and daughter. And so we've ministered with him all over. And, um, and at the end of this service in Alabama, my husband felt this impression from the Lord um, which sometimes when you get a word of knowledge, you can physically feel it in your body. Like sometimes you'll feel another person's pain. And so my husband, he felt this like choking sensation around his neck. And he felt like there was someone that was there that felt this choking sensation. He thought that maybe um, this person had been a victim of, of some abuse. We've seen some people that have dealt with abuse have physical issues and, and God heals them. So he thought it was maybe that. So he called out like, choking and maybe someone with a domestic abuse situation uh, that the Lord needs to heal and no one responded to the word but a woman came up to us later and said well I'm not a victim of domestic abuse but I do have choking that I feel all the time and so we said okay what's going on and we found out that for about 20 years uh, this woman had been dealing with seizures and they started out as, as smaller seizures when she was young, but then eventually they escalated into grand mal seizures. And in the 90s, she had done an experimental surgery where they put this device in her heart that had a cord attached to the device and it wrapped uh, internally around her throat and connected to the base of her brain to help uh, regulate the electrical impulses in her brain. So, this device had been set on a certain power setting, but the seizures were getting worse, so they had to keep turning the power up on the setting. And apparently, with these grand mal seizures, the highest t chance for her to go into a seizure was at night, because your REM cycle creates all sort of electrical activity in your brain. And so every night, um, this device, when it was regulating the seizure activity, it would squeeze and it would choke her because it was wrapped internally around her neck. And so every night she was afraid of, of suffocating. So she was hardly able to sleep. You can only imagine the situation she was in. So obviously we felt a lot of compassion for her. We just sat and prayed with her. We prayed with her for a long time, maybe about an hour. And um, she it didn't necessarily seem like she got healed in the beginning. She said she just felt almost like this band or pressure around her head. Uh, and she just felt something kind of squeezing around her head. And that was all she said she felt. Uh, and I say that because when we pray for people, we like to ask people, what are you feeling? What's going on? Because for us, we want to partner with what the Holy Spirit is doing. And the only way we know what the Holy Spirit is doing is to ask the person what they're feeling. <laughs> So we we're asking her, what, what are you feeling? What's going on? And so she told us that. And, and then we left. And we weren't sure if anything had happened. And especially my husband was feeling very uh, discouraged and, and just c couldn't bear to think about how she was suffering. And so he didn't necessarily follow up with her to say, like, how are you doing? Because he just couldn't bear to hear, like, oh, I'm not healed. <laughs> so we were at the conference. And, you know, he was thinking about her, but kind of not really wanting to talk to her because he was feeling discouraged. And she ran up to him and just grabbed him and said, it didn't choke me last night. It didn't choke me last night. It didn't choke me last night. He's crazy. And so she said, but 
I'm, I have a doctor's appointment next week, and so I'll find out officially what's going on because this device has kept me from seizuring. So I don't, like, I don't know what's going on, you know? Because uh, if the device isn't working, then technically I should be having seizures. So she goes to the doctor and they do a scan, and they said, did you come in contact with an electric fence? <laughs> and she said, no, and they said, well, something internally has fried this device. <laughs> And um, she said, really? And they were like, yeah, this device is no longer working. Have you had any seizures? And she said, no. So the Lord not only stopped the device, but he also completely healed her of her seizures. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. So beautiful. And, and the Lord, um, I mean, she's still, uh, you know, walking in this healing. And she actually was a speaker at a, a, like an epileptic conference in the United States where different people that dealt with ep epilepsy would gather together and she was one of the speakers because she'd been dealing with this for so long and because she did this experimental procedure. So because of that, she had a bit of a following in the epileptic community and yeah, the Lord just brought such healing to her. It was beautiful. So just wanted to share those with you this morning to just encourage your faith uh, that God He's doing so many things, and it's beautiful, and he's on the move, and, and it's just exciting to get to partner with the Holy Spirit. It's something that we share often at Global Awakening, and, and something that um, our spiritual father, Dr. Randy Clark, wrote a book called There Is More, meaning that there's more that's available to you in the kingdom of God. And it's just so exciting that we get to live this life of partnering with the Holy Spirit. So I believe that there's more that God has for you all this weekend. And uh, I just want to invite you to stand, and I'll just pray over you all. All right. We can just turn our affection to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, God, that you're here. And Lord, we just honor you. We, we thank you that you are a good God, that you're a faithful God, that you're the God that dwells with us, that you're Emmanuel, God with us, that you love to be with us, that we're your children. And Holy Spirit, I just pray, Lord, that you would activate your people even this weekend, God, as we're having these different services, as we're having these gatherings, Lord, that you would come with your power, that you come with your goodness and your grace. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy that's new every morning, for your healing power, that you're still sitting on the throne, that you're on the throne of our hearts. So Jesus, we just exalt you this morning. We thank you, Lord, as, as we're coming into the Easter weekend soon, next weekend, that you died for us, that you rose for us, so that we can have access. We can have access to the Father. We can have access to the kingdom of God, that you have drawn near to us. And so, Lord, we choose to draw near to you. And I thank you, God, for your people here this morning. Lord, I pray that they would be activated, that even as I'm sharing these stories, that it would stir within them a hunger for what's available in you. And I thank you, Lord, that when we hunger and thirst for righteousness, that we shall be satisfied, that you're going to answer us, that when we seek, when we ask, when we knock, that you're going to answer us, that you're a good father, that when we ask for bread, you're not going to give us a stone. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you're going to do here this weekend. And I just bless everyone here, and I just pray, God, that they would encounter more of you, more of you. Thank you, Jesus, for your faithfulness and your kindness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, I did feel like I got one word of knowledge this morning, and we'll be sharing some more this evening. Uh, but is there a Kaylee here, someone named Kaylee? Maybe you know someone named Kaylee, your granddaughter. Okay, does she need healing for anything or she does? Okay, all right. Well, I would love to pray with you for her, for healing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can just pray for you if you want as we, I think I'm gonna do more like one-on-one -on -one prayer right now. Okay, so I'd love to do that, but yeah. 
So as I said, if you're not familiar with words of knowledge, God will speak things to us. And it's, and it's Jesus basically saying, like, I want to bring healing right now when he speaks these things to us. And so you'll see my husband and I operate in those some tonight. And um, he more teaching on it. I don't know. How many of you guys are familiar with words of knowledge? I'm not. Okay. Okay. So about half of you. All right. That's good. <laughs> awesome. We go into all sorts of environments where people are new, you know, so I just like to find out, but I don't know. Okay. There we go. God bless you. Thank you so much for uh, being here this morning. And, and it was a privilege to be with you all. Amen. I'll just take this song before we close if that's okay while she's praying for Kay- for Kaylee you never know what God will do while we are praying she might give you my good name in her heart who knows Holy Spirit you are welcome here wants to heal somebody who has migraines as she was speaking about migraines you, you could connect with her you get them every now and again or constant headaches on the right side of the head I don't know but if you're such a person just lift your hand while she's here why not she could just pray for you as well amen to be 
with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. as we go on from here that your presence will continue with us that no one here will walk out of your presence your name is Emmanuel God with us are we going home are we going to the shops are we going wherever thank you because your presence abides with us and I just want to challenge somebody don't just go home are you here for prayers baby girl headaches <laughs> Camden can I give her to you please thank you um, tell her, tell her about you. Yeah. And you too. <laughs> Amen. So you give them another song that's nice and gentle. So the rest of us, as we go on, we just continue in the presence of God. I want to say to us that sometimes you can intentionally draw your own healing. So the woman with the issue of blood went herself to look for Jesus to touch the hem of his garment. Blind Bartimaeus went by himself. And cried out, Jesus, Jesus, and Jesus healed him. And then we have others that just showed up and Jesus healed them. They didn't ask for anything. Amen. But prepare your hearts, prepare yourselves, prepare your families and come. Healing is not just physical. It's emotional. It's spiritual. It's psychological. It's relationship. It's financial. Healing is very broad. And that's why Jesus came, as we saw in that Matthew scripture. Amen. The Lord bless you all in Jesus' name. Thank you all for coming. We'll share the grace together in fellowship while the worship team will continue, while there's ministry taking place. Amen. Just to say to the ladies, our next breakfast will be in July. Is that okay? We will take a break in April. And then, gentlemen, your next breakfast will be what month after July? August. Amen. And both of them will be the third Saturday. Third Saturday in July and the third Saturday in August. Amen. Amen. Let's share the grace in fellowship. Shabbat. 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 The grace of Jesus Christ. The, the love, love of, of God, God and the, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with be us all now and, now and evermore. Amen. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your lives and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. And service tonight is at what? 7 p.m. <laughs> so I'll see all of you plus more at 7 p.m. Amen. You're all welcome. Thank you. Yes, what I'm saying. Mercy and grace unfold. 
hunger and thirst, a hunger and thirst, and young stretched wide. I know you hear my cry. Speak to me now. Speak to me. Jesus, breathe.